Okay, so uh, apparently in room 401 we start exactly on time. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce Christopher. Christopher uh, works at home in Sweden. He's a senior developer for SUSE and works on the high availability extension. Please welcome Christopher. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I work at SUSE, but I don't work on Pony. So, um, but I, they were nice enough to send me here anyway, even though this is not really related to my work uh, yet. We'll see. Um, so Pony is a programming language. Uh, I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, it's uh, an open source, object-oriented, actor model, capability secure, high performance programming language. And uh, some of those things are more familiar to people, and some of those things are kind of less familiar, I think. Uh, so it's, um, it's an interesting language that I'm uh, looking at kind of as a uh, future experiment to play with. Uh, but it's not something that I use for work today. And uh, the current release of Pony is 0 0.21. So it's pre-1.0, but uh, it's already used by some people in production uh, in the financial technologies industry and other things. So it's, it's not a complete toy language, but it's, uh, yeah, you, you might find some uh, parts that it, are not entirely nailed down or, and can still change uh, before 1.0. So, um, Open source, it's a BSD licensed uh, language on GitHub, uh, open community. It's a small community, very friendly, answering questions and so on, so easy to deal with. Uh, object oriented, it's not anything particularly strange. It's kind of in the vein of .NET or Java in that sense, but uh, not really, as we'll see. Uh, actor model, so it's um, similar to Erlang, if anyone's used that. Uh, it's, um, it's a particular way of dealing with threads and multiple processes. Uh, so you have, in Pony, you have actors, which are kind of like Go routines in Golang, if someone has used those, uh, or processes in Erlang. Um, capability secure is kind of the part that's really different about Pony from other languages. And the way that they implement capabilities in Pony is also different from other capability secure languages, even though there aren't that many that people know about. Uh, so that's the part I'm going to talk about the most, probably. Uh, and high performance, so it's um, compiled using LLVM to native code. Um, it's, uh, it has a garbage collector, but it, it's a pretty good garbage collector. Uh, and um, it has a performance that's comparable to C and C++ or so Rust and uh, languages like that. So it's a uh, Pretty unique language, and it's pretty cool. Um, it was developed by a guy called Sylvan Klebsch as his PhD at the Imperial College in London. Uh, and his um, professor was Sylvia Drosopoulou. I don't know if I get that right. Um, and she's a researcher in capability security for programming languages. Uh, Sylvan's background is in um, video games, so flight simulators, and also in the financial industry, so high frequency trading. Uh, so his background was um, high performance applications uh, and um, high concurrency applications. So it needed a lot of uh, concurrent code running securely. Um, and uh, he needed language that had high performance. And he couldn't find a good language that was mixing these like strong type system, uh, high security with uh, the actor model and uh, and the high performance that he wanted. So that's why he started developing um, Pony. And I also want to mention Sean T. Allen, who is the current maintainer of Pony. Uh, he's been very helpful to me in answering questions and teaching me as much as I know about the language. Um, the reason it's called Pony is not a uh, My Little Pony reference. It's, uh, this is the explanation that Sylvan gives. I think it's like an American saying that if you ask for the impossible, you might as well ask for a pony as well. And uh, when he kept describing the language to people, people would just say like, yeah, yeah, I want a pony. So he had a pony to the language, so you get everything you want. Um, and yeah, I'm not in the pony core team. I'm just a user. Uh, I'm, uh, I've just started using it this year, so I probably don't know everything about it. I might be wrong about some things. Um, I'm not using it for anything serious. Uh, so take what I say with a grain of salt. 
So in this talk, I'm going to start by showing some examples because I always find that when talking about a programming language without actually seeing some code, it's not, it's too abstract. It doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to start by showing you some examples of small programs and some features of the language so you can get a sense of what it looks like. And then I'm going to talk about the background and um, kind of the details of the implementation and get into the reference capabilities, which is um, how the type system works in order to ensure uh, the sa safety uh, that it provides. Uh, I'm then going to show a few more examples of features in the language, and then I'm hopefully going to have time to show uh, a little demo of a program I wrote just to show um, kind of the surprise to me was despite having this very different type system based on reference capabilities, it's actually really easy to write pony code just coming in as a new beginner. And so I managed to write a little demo game in just uh, a few days um, before this presentation. I wanted to show kind of like what the code looks like and uh, give everyone a sense of um, what it might look like to write uh, a Pony program. Uh, don't take that as an example of how to write good Pony code since I'm just a beginner. Uh, I don't know how to do it right yet. Uh, if you want to try any of the examples that I give or try Pony without having to download and install the compiler, you can do that at the playground.ponylang.org, which has an online version of the compiler, so you can uh, follow along and try it out without having to go through the whole installation process. Um, and yeah, without further ado, this is uh, Hello World in Pony. Uh, so first of all, uh, every program has at least one actor. So an actor corresponds to a thread or a Go routine. Uh, it's not mapped one-to-one -to, -one to system threads, so you can have a lot more actors than you have system threads, but each actor is uh, conceptually its own thread of execution. Uh, so you have, every program has a main actor, and the way um, you create an actor is through a constructor, and you declare the constructor with a new keyword. Uh, so here we have a constructor uh, called create. That's kind of the default constructor. You, uh, actors and classes can have multiple different constructors. Um, and um, one kind of interesting thing about Pony is that there are no global variables. Uh, so if you want to write to standard out, you need a reference to standard out to do that. And the way you get that is through the environment that's passed into the main actor. Uh, so it's a little bit awkward that you have to pass this around. So if you want to print use some debug statement somewhere, you have to make sure to pass the environment all the way down there so you can print it. Uh, but uh, it's central to the way that the security in the language works, so uh, it makes sense from that point of view. And it's, it's not that much of a bother. Um, not much more to say about that. If you do download the compiler, it's called Pony C. Uh, it's on GitHub at uh, ponylang slash ponyc. And also, if you go to ponylang.org, you can download it from there, or probably your Linux distribution has it packaged already. So I know OpenSUSE has it because I've packaged it for OpenSUSE, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that other distributions also have uh, packages available. So you can get the compiler, and then you just, um, it's a little bit uh, flexible in the way that you can just create a folder, you just put some files named something.pony in that folder, and then you just run ponyc, and it will create, it will compile all of those into a, an executable with the name of the containing folder. Uh, so that's pretty convenient. Uh, there's also classes in Pony. So uh, actors are kind of classes that correspond to a thread, whereas classes with the key class keyword are just objects of data. And classes can have uh, variables and methods and constructors. So uh, in this example, there's um, one variable name that's declared using the let keyword. And this is kind of like final in Java, if you've used that. So it's a single assignment variable. So you can assign once to the name variable, and then you can't reassign it again. It's always going to be the same value. If you want um, a variable that you can reassign, you use the var keyword. And uh, in this case, uh, the default value of the mood var variable is zero. And uh, yeah, there's another constructor which passes in a different value. Uh, and using the fun keyword, you declare uh, methods on uh, classes. So hopefully nothing too confusing here. i32 is a 32-bit integer. There's also i64 and u32, u64, 
and so on. Uh, so it's, um, it's kind of like a um, systems language in the way that you have uh, types mapping to the system types. So an I32 is actually a 32-bit integer in the final code. So it's, um, it's closer to a native language in some ways. Uh, but it also it looks more like a dynamic language. Uh, it kind of looks like Python. It's easy to think that the, it has significant white space, uh, but it actually it doesn't. So it has significant line breaks in some cases. So you need line breaks between declaring variables, uh, but the indentation doesn't matter that much, and it's just two spaces seems to be the standard. Um, there's also primitives. Uh, a primitive is basically a um, class with a single instance which is immutable. So this is useful for, for example, declaring functions that you want to use. So here you can invoke this using math.double math or math.trouble. Um, primitives are also used for creating um, constants in Pony. So using the apply function, you can override the uh, function application of an object. So after declaring these, you can invoke happy as a function and it will return 100. Um, you can, it also has oper operator overloading for other operators like plus and minus and, and times. So in this example, we create a vector class that has an x and a y, a floating point. And uh, I define a add method, which lets you add vectors together. Um, so an example of using that would be uh, creating two vectors and then adding them together, you get a new vector. Um, you can also use primitives to create enums. So this is how you do kind of the enum pattern in Pony, is that you create a bunch of primitives for the different values of the enum, and then you create a union type or a selection type, um, which is the value of a of a variable of the type color is either red, green, or blue. Um, so this is uh, kind of hinting at the power of the type system. So the type system is similar to Haskell and other strongly typed languages. So there's no null in Pony, for example. You would use uh, value or none as the uh, type of a return, for example, to indicate that it might not return the value you want. Um, so an example of using this uh, color uh, value is we can declare an array of colors and uh, set to uh, something like that and then uh, loop through that array. Um, the values method on arrays returns an iterator over the values. Uh, there's also uh, keys on arrays that you get all the indices and you have pairs which return a tuple of the key and the value, so the index and the object. Uh, and this is the same for hash maps and other, other uh, collections. Um, and another uh, noteworthy thing about Pony is that similar to Rust and some other languages, everything is an expression. So you can, uh, all the control structures are expressions. So you can put them wherever you can put an expression. So you can assign the result of an if statement or an if expression uh, or pass it into a function and so on. So, uh, in this case, we will print yes for the greens and no for everything else. Um, there's also a match statement, which is a little bit more uh, flexible. So in this case, we have an array of colors or numbers, and uh, we match on each element in the array, and we can match on both type and value. So for example, we can match on the value 100, and if that matches, we print 100. Uh, we can match on the type of a number and assign that to a variable of the type number and then use that. Uh, and then we can match on the uh, primitive types, uh, so green, red, and so on. Uh, so that's, that's quite useful. And that's, that should also be familiar to anyone who's used uh, functional programming languages, uh, Erlang or uh, other, lang other languages like that. Um, there are two kinds of interfaces in Pony. Um, I don't know if this is just because uh, Sylvan couldn't decide which way to go, so he put both in. Traits are more like interfaces in Java, so for a class to implement an interface uh, a trait, it needs to declare, so you say class something something is edible. 
and then it would get the methods defined in the trait. And you can provide default implementations or you don't have to, so then you would have to implement that. Um, the other interface type, which is declared using the interface keyword, is more like interfaces in Golang if you've used those. So it's uh, structural uh, interfaces. So any class or actor which has the deadly function or method uh, fulfills the poisonous interface. Um, and another interesting thing about the pony types of business, you can have uh, union types where you would say that a questionable food choice is both edible and poisonous. Um, so, and for, for a class to implement this, then it would have to say that it's edible and then have the deadly uh, method. Um, you can also uh, declare that you're using an interface. So you can say, a class can say class something something is poisonous, and then you get the default implementation if there are any in the interface. So, so really the trait one is kind of unnecessary, but uh, the, the reasoning that, uh, that I've gotten is that in some cases you really want to make sure that the compiler can check that the interface is being implemented. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit stricter uh, in that sense. So another example of, of one of these types is the, this is the type of the hash map implementation in, uh, in Pony or Dict if you come from the Python world. So uh, this is a generic type that has two parameters, K and V. And k is constrained to be hashable and comparable to other uh, objects of the type k. Um, the box uh, keyword there is related to the reference capability, so I'm going to get into that a bit more. Uh, so I'm not going to talk more about that right now. And then my final example, oh yeah, yeah, it's visible on the screen. <laughs> it's hard to get code onto slides. Um, eventually, the slide runs out. So. Um, there are modules you can include, so here I'm using the collections module which provides the range um, uh, object. And um, here, this is an example of two actors communicating. So this is basically two threads passing mes messages to each other. And the way you do that in Pony is um, using behaviors. So these are declared using the B keyword. So we have an interface counter notify which says that Anything that implements this interface needs to have the behavior get count. So that means that other actors can send an actor with this behavior the message get count and pass in a count uh, value. And so we can use that to implement a simple counter. So in this case, we create a counter. Uh, we send a bunch of increment messages to the counter. Um, we then send a get and reset message and pass in ourselves as the argument. And um, basically, the Message sends are always asynchronous, so the main function will do this and complete. And then the other actor will go to work and receive all these messages, increment the counter, and then finally send back a response with the final count to uh, the original actor, which will then wake up, uh, handle that message, and print the value. So, so this is how the message passing works. And here you can see another example of the reference capabilities in the declar declaration of uh, get and reset, uh, which takes a tag uh, reference. So another thing that I'm going to get into a little bit later. So why Pony? Um, Pony is interesting to me because it uh, has this mix of things that I'm, I'm interested in having in language. So in my day job, I work with high availability and distributed systems. And uh, one of the things that I kind of miss in the things that we have now is that all the code, because it needs to be high performance, is written in C. And C is not exactly a safe language. So there are some other languages that try to address this, like Rust, um, where it's kind of a new niche for programming languages to be both strongly typed and uh, natively compiled. Uh, but I, I kind of feel like you know, one language exploring this space is not enough. So even though I'm also interested in Rust, um, I, I think that it's interesting that there are other versions of this. And the thing that Pony adds to kind of this mix is the actor model. So it has a different threading model than, um, than Rust does, uh, which um, gives it some really interesting properties. Um, the philosophy behind the design of, of um, Pony is summed up as get stuff done. 
And this is a reference to uh, a paper written by Richard Gabriel called Worse is Better, if anyone's re read that paper, if anyone's a programming language geek like me. Um, and the basic idea is that the most important aspect of, of any feature or any design decision when making Pony was correctness. So um, safe, type safety and type correctness and avoiding undefined behavior and things like this is the most important property of the language. Uh, the second most important property is performance. So maintaining high performance and maintaining uh, na near native, near C level performance was really important when designing the language. Uh, a little bit less important with simplicity, so keeping the language simple. And consistency is something we can sacrifice to gain the other, uh, other properties. And finally, completeness, as in having all the possible language features, is the least important um, uh, feature, uh, so to speak. So, thanks to the design of the reference capabilities uh, in, in Pony, it really is kind of unique in that it's native performance compiled language that is type safe, memory safe, exception safe. So it has uh, something similar to checked exceptions in Java where the language can check that you have to deal with all the errors in some way. Um, data is free, so this is the same as Rust provides. So it, the language can at compile time ensure that there are no data races between threads. And deadlock free, because since Pony relies on asynchronous message passing as the only thread um, uh, communication method, there are no locks. And so there is no way to deadlock. Um, there are, of course, still ways of making a program never terminate. It would be impossible not to have that. But at least we have these properties. Um, Pony also has a really cool garbage collector. Um, it's uh, a fully concurrent garbage collector without any stop the world phase. So this is unlike any other garbage collector that I know of, uh, out there. It's uh, really high performance. It relies entirely on the message passing um, system. So the garbage collector is just another actor in the system. Um, and uh, it's kind of academically proven to be able to collect cycles and uh, all of this as well. And another cool thing about this is that the garbage collector also can collect the actors themselves. So there's no need to maintain the, the lifetime of actors. Uh, once an actor stops receiving messages and no one has a reference to it anymore, the garbage collector will eventually come around and collect it. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is from a paper written on the garbage collector that's available on the ponylang.org website. Um, of course, take these kind of benchmarks with a grain of salt. This is from a paper describing the garbage collector that wins this benchmark. But uh, it's still, it's kind of an interesting indication of uh, one of the interesting properties of this garbage collector is that it manages to maintain really good uh, responsiveness uh, even during heavy loads. So uh, this is comparing to the Erlang garbage collector to, and to two different JVM garbage collectors. And um, one explanation that I got for why this is so important is uh, given to me by uh, Sean, who's the maintainer of the language. And he's working in the financial industry with high frequency trading. And there, one of the problems that they were having with the JVM was that they, when they were running different processes on different machines, communicating to each other and really pushing the garbage collector, due to the stop, stop the world phases where the garbage collector would have to stop all of the threads in one process to do some um, bookkeeping in order to garbage collect, the two or multiple processes on different machines would start to oscillate and start to kind of get in sync. And you would get situations where the whole system communicating would freeze and stop responding for a certain period of time because the garbage collectors were kind of having this second order interaction. Um, so this is one of the reasons for the design of this uh, garbage collector in this way, is to avoid that kind of uh, interaction across um, system boundaries. So this, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, these are some other benchmarks from the paper. Um, it's just showing how the garbage collector is maintaining uh, the low uh, overhead even in the face of um, 
scaling up to multiple uh, cores. So in this case, uh, this is different benchmark scaling up from four to 64 cores. And uh, different garbage collector have different poor behavior for this benchmark. So for example, in the mailbox example, the Erlang uh, garbage collector would just uh, have this uh, nasty behavior taking longer and longer. Uh, whereas Pony keeps a uh, fairly um, linear um, pattern across the scaling. Uh, so pretty cool. The actor implementation is also really fast. So this is really important. Um, messaging between actors is thanks to the type system and the reference capabilities. It doesn't have to copy messages. So in Erlang, whenever you send a message, you have to copy the data so it ends up in the other uh, process. Um, in uh, Pony, you can actually pass mutable data between actors without any locks or without any copies. So this is uh, really powerful. And this is thanks to the type system. Uh, actors are really fast and lightweight. So there's a 240 byte overhead per actor. So you can have millions of actors in a, in a single process. Um, and uh, actors are garbage collected, as I said. So there's no need to maintain the lifetime. Uh, one thing that I'm not mentioning here is um, uh, distribution across multiple machines. Uh, this is something that's not yet implemented in Pony. And my feeling is a little bit that the design of the language makes that really hard to get. But I think it's still interesting, even if it's stuck on one machine, to have these uh, scaling properties. And of course, you can communicate by passing me messages, not natively in the language, but as regular network communication. So. Uh, it's, uh, but yeah, it's a caveat. It's good to be aware of. There is some research going on in implementing distributed pony, but um, I don't know what the state of that is. And the current language doesn't have that feature. So reference capabilities. This is the kind of the elephant in the room. So these are all really nice properties. What's the catch? Well, the catch is reference capabilities. So this is kind of. Um, difficult to wrap your hand around, and it's definitely the piece of Pony that takes the longest to understand. Um, but I have to say that I found it in practice, when I started writing code, I found it really easy to, to write code. And I never had the issues that I had with other languages where I just didn't know how to implement something. So um, it's actually not as bad as it seems when you used to see uh, the, the feature. So the key, the key aspect of reference capabilities is related to aliasing. So basically, Aliasing is when you have multiple uh, variables or references pointing to the same data. Uh, for example, here we have A and B both pointing to the same uh, piece of data in memory. If A and B live on separate threads, um, there's very little we can do with that data without causing data races. So for example, if A can write to the data and B can read from the data, that's not safe because B could read while we're writing or we could write while we're reading and we're going to get uh, weird inter interactions. And in the same way, if A can write to the data and B can write to the data, this is definitely not safe because they can both write at the same time. Uh, but if A can only read from the data and B can only read from the data, then it's totally safe. So this one case is OK. So what Pony does is kind of encode all the different combinations of aliases into these reference capabilities. And the thing that's different about Pony from other capabilities languages is that the reference capabilities are so-called deny capabilities. So what the, the reference capabilities say is what other aliases may exist given that we have this alias to some data. So if I have an alias of a certain type, what other kinds of aliases can exist? Can there be a reference to this data from another thread, or is that not possible? Um, to dig into this, we have to distinguish between two types of aliases. So there is local aliases, with, which are multiple reference to the same data within a single thread or a single actor. Um, and there are global aliases, which is where you have multiple reference to the same data across actor boundaries. Um, and there's another property of uh, aliases that's important and, and key, and that's uh, sendability. So is this data something that we can pass from one actor to another? Is it safe to put this in a message and send it off to another actor? 
and that's also encoded in these uh, reference cave bits. So now I'm just going to go through them, and uh, hopefully you remember them all. No, that's fine. But um, so the first one is pretty simple. It's val. So a reference with the val capability uh, is read only, so you can only read from it. And it also guarantees that all other reference to that data are also read only. So if you have a val reference to some data, you know that all other reference to the data are also read only. So this is obviously safe to share between actors. So if you have a val uh, reference, you can pass it in a message to another actor. And uh, yeah, this is something that you can use as uh, immutable data and so on. Uh, so this is pretty common. For example, all of the um, constants like uh, numbers and constant strings, they're all val. Um, the other reference type that's the most common one is uh, ref. And this is a reference similar to references in Java. So it's basically you have full access to the data. You can read to it, you can write, uh, read from it, you can write to it. Um, so uh, aliases with the reference capability tell you that there cannot be any references from other threads to this data, since there's no way to have a safe reference to that data from another thread. So, so uh, aliases or data that has a ref uh, alias are not safe to send to another actor. These you cannot put, put in the message. So these are stuck in a single actor. Uh, but you can have in a single thread or a single actor, you can have multiple references to that data. So you can have mul multiple of these kind of references. The next one is ISO. ISO means isolated. And what this says is if you have a reference to some data with this capability, there can be no other aliases. This is the only alias. And you can read to it and write to it. It's yours to do what you want. But there can only be one reference. And the compiler will track and make sure that there's only one reference to the data. Um, this one is also safe to send across actor boundaries as long as I, the current actor, releases the reference when they send it. So if we have some data that we have an ISO uh, reference to, if we drop that reference and put it into a message and send it to another actor, the other actor will now have a uh, writable reference to that data. So this is how you can share um, mutable data, so data that you can change uh, between actors in a safe manner is using the ISO reference. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. And now we're starting to get into the capabilities that are kind of mind-bending. So the next one is tag, which we saw before. Um, a tag is a reference which can't read and can't write. And that would seem totally useless. Uh, but the thing that you can do with a tag reference is send its messages. So this is how you reference other actors. So if you have a tag reference to another actor, you can send it a message. You can also compare tags. So a tag is like a unique identifier. So you can check, is this actor reference the same as another actor reference, and so on. So it's actually quite a useful uh, reference. And also, you can have tag reference to basically anything else. Because since you're not going to read from it, you're not going to write from it, it's safe to manipulate in, in any way. So. Uh, even though you can't really use it for much, you can use it for messaging, and uh, it's, it's quite practical for that reason. Next one is box. So this is uh, maybe not the best name. Uh, it's not my naming. Uh, the idea is that it's like a black box. If we have a box reference to some data, then we have a read-only alias. So we can read from that reference. Um, but we don't know if there are other aliases that may write to it. So there could be other aliases to that data within the same actor that can write to it. So we could have a ref alias to that data. Uh, but since that's in the same thread, there's no race there. We, we, can get a, we can read from it because there's no one who can write from it while we're reading. Or there could be val references from other actors. In that case, there can't be any, anyone writing to it. But um, there could be someone else reading from it at the same time. Uh, both of these are safe. So it's kind of, um, we don't know if it's val or we don't know if it's ref, but it's kind of uh, in between. We just know that we can read from it and that's safe. Uh, and so this is useful for declaring parameters to functions where you want to read from something, but you don't really care what the actual uh, type of data it is. If it's local to the thread or if it's something that's shared between threads, you're just using it and um, you don't really 
care so much. So this is uh, actually seen quite a lot. And the final one, which is the most rare, is the transition type uh, or transition capability. And this one is a little bit difficult to understand. Uh, it's a read-write alias to some data where there may be other, lo other local box aliases. So there may be other aliases within the same thread with the box capability uh, that can read from that data. Uh, and we can write, from it, write to it in this um, uh, transition uh, alias. And the question is, why is this useful? Well, it's useful because if we drop this transition reference, we can convert that into a val. Because now all of the references are read only. And at that point, we can send it to another actor. So this is useful for when you have some data that you want to manipulate inside one actor. And then when you're done with it, you want to share it with others. So for example, maybe we're doing some image manipulation and we want to do that efficiently. We can do that in one actor, make all the changes. And when we're done, we convert it into a val and we can send it out to other actors to read from at the same time in a safe manner. Uh, so those are all the reference capabilities. That's basically the whole type system. And this is what provides all the guarantees. And um, at this point, it probably seems like it's going to be a lot of trouble juggling these capabilities. But in practice, it's actually not that difficult. So there are two operations in the language for manipulating references uh, or capabilities. That's the consume and the recover um, uh, keywords or operations. So uh, the consume one is that you um, can drop the reference that you have. So for example, here we have an ISO reference to a string. So uh, I copy a string um, so that I get a mutable copy into an ISO reference. So here A is mutable. You can um, write to it. Uh, and then I try to create uh, another reference to that same data. And that should be impossible. But if we use the consume keyword, we can drop A. So now A can no longer refer to that data. You can only refer to it through B. And we can then also drop B and pass it to print. So print is a behavior. So it's um, a message that we're sending to another actor to print to the command line. Um, and print takes a val reference. So it needs something that's uh, read only. And we can get that if we drop our ISO reference, because now there are no longer any reference to this data. So we can convert it into a val and pass it on. So this is quite common, you see, uh, when you pass uh, objects into uh, messages, you would consume the final reference and release kind of the capabilities of it. The other one is a little bit more difficult to explain. Uh, it's uh, recover. Uh, so this is uh, recover creates a scope. And in that scope, you can create uh, variables of different capabilities. And as long as all of the references are contained within that scope, you can convert the re result, the, the value that you pass out of the scope, into pretty much any reference that you want. So uh, in this case, we create a string, and we create it with 100 bytes of storage. Um, and the constructor which creates a string that has some uh, storage built in uh, creates a ref uh, object. So this is uh, not safe to send to other actors. And the ref alias cannot be converted to anything else because you don't know, the, the type system doesn't know if there are other ref aliases to it. So we can, by containing it in this recover scope and passing out an ISO, we can convert that into an ISO reference. So we get an ISO string. So we can edit it, appending some text to it, and then we can convert it into a read-only value and pass it to another actor. Uh, so that's how that's used. Uh, and I'm running out of time. I knew I was going to end up doing this. There's also object capabilities, which is uh, handled for like file uh, uh, um, permissions. And for example, if you want to talk on the network, uh, the network connection needs the authority to do that. And you create, so there are, these are different uh, authority levels. So you can decide that this uh, connection only has the right to listen to TCP connection. It doesn't have the right to create new connections. So it's a way to keep uh, security within the language. This is the capability security that I was mentioning. Uh, and there are a bunch of other features. I'm just going to skip through them because I'm running out of time. 
Uh, there's a uh, really easy interrupt with C. Of course, all bets are off once you start calling into C. C can do anything. Uh, but uh, this is an example of creating a window using SDL. Uh, really, really easy, really easy, really nice. Um, generics are really powerful. So uh, a typical difficult thing to do in um, a strongly typed language is creating a linked list because you have reference to, you have something with a reference to something of itself. Uh, this is actually really easy to do in Pony. There are some aspects of this that I haven't mentioned. So there's a viewpoint adaptation. This basically says that this has the capability that my view of the capabilities of an object of the type list of A. It's a little bit difficult to wrap your hand around. You only really see that in the context of generic code. So you don't really have to worry about it that much. Um, Here's the uh, iterator for the list. So it has uh, another restriction that's uh, it's called uh, read. So this is any capability that allows reading. Uh, use the declaration for the, the constraints on types. Uh, and then this is an example of using that. So it's pretty, pretty easy, uh, pretty simple. Uh, some of the things that I didn't have time to mention, uh, there's uh, default arguments, named arguments, the error handling I didn't really get into, uh, this lambda functions, partial functions, so currying, um, bang and hat capabilities, something that you see but didn't have time to talk about that. There's a packet manager, so on. And uh, I don't really have that much time for the demo but I still want to show it so I'm gonna. Um, so if I pull, I wrote a little language thing. Uh, let's see, can I get this one out of the way? No, I can't see there. If you go out, uh, fill this one back there, and then see if I can get Emacs over here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's the code for my example. Uh, let's see if I open a terminal. I'm just gonna, my tiny horse example. It's actually a multiplayer game uh, that I wrote in just a few days. So I'm kind of happy with the language. So there was no support for SDL, so I had to write that myself. It was really easy. Uh, and so we have here, oh, it ended up on this screen. Here we have a horse, and it can walk around, and it can pick up apples. So it's not really a game. No, don't get too excited. Uh, this is all you can do, but what I can do is I can create another client. And uh, if I put that in, see now we have two horses. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you can compete. Who can eat the most apples? It's not a great game, but just to show that I managed to write software that's using STL, rendering graphics in real time, so this is 60 FPS, uh, no problems, sending Mes uh, TCP connections, sending messages, uh, handling, all that. And when I wrote this, I didn't have a single, not one single time that I have a, a crash in the runtime. So it's, a, it's pretty cool. And uh, the code for the server, I can show you that uh, before I'm completely out of time. So there's some uh, tables, there's a little creation. Uh, here's an example of creating a listener. So here we're passing in. So this is basically saying uh, you can do anything with the connection. Uh, ambient auth is like the do anything uh, root capability. Um, listening from connections. Uh, I then receive connections down here somewhere. Uh, I have some examples of sending. So receiving messages from the client, uh, reading that, handling the client connection. So here we're accepting the connection receive data from the connection. Uh, all I'm doing here is uh, appending it to a buffer and then uh, passing messages uh, with that. And uh, there's some code for handling the player and for handling the apples, and that's it. So not much code, pretty simple, pretty cool. Uh, running out of time, that's Pony. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
So I don't know if I have any time for questions. I think not. Well, uh, let's... No. no. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm around. You can ask me questions. Okay.